We're obsessed with the Connie Fife Show. It's about a lifestyle shift to move up or out. Hey, what's your jam? What's the one thing that really drives you? What makes you unstoppable? It's about opening a new door to live your dream. People give up way too early on their dreams. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about keeping it real. Damn, now the interviewee is interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Stop taking shit so seriously. Y'all can't do this. Take an outrageous look at life and laugh. This is the Connie Fife Show. We love your voice. We love your jam. You need to be on radio. And now your host, Connie Fife. Good morning, good afternoon, good whatever day of time of day it is for you. This is Connie Fife, your Unstoppable Diva, and I want to welcome you to the Connie Fife Show. We have an incredible guest with us today, and he just happens to be on our roster for the Talent Concierge Agency, and his name is Rob Stevenson. He is a phenomenal speaker, a building a high performance culture, improving efficiency and accelerating growth for businesses all over the world. He has spoke over 2,500 times. And if you want to check him out, I advise that you check him out. You can head on over to YouTube to his page, or you can head over to talentconcierge.com. And we have a lot more information for him right there. So here he is with us in the studio, Rob Stevenson. It's good to be here with you, Connie. I'm I'm looking forward to this. (laughs) Uh, Rob, this has been a long time coming to get you on the show. This is a a fantastic uh, opportunity. And you were actually on the show last year, early on in in, um, 2020. But of course, we know what happened with 2020. And there's been a lot of changes over over that time. A bunch. Uh, Yeah, a bunch, a bunch. So how, how have you been? How have you been faring? How have you been working through what what has happened this past year in terms of your speaking and your consulting and all the work that you're doing? Well, it was interesting. My last live speaking engagement, because I do probably uh, 70 or 75 a year, Mm -hmm. uh, was uh, February 9th. I remember that date forever. February 9th, 2020. And then then the calendar went blank. I mean, it, yeah. everybody, all all programs were being canceled. Uh, I mean, even I mean, international or you are, are you in the United States? They were just all canceled. So uh, you had to go virtual. And so mm-hmm. it was. Uh, I remember when I when I first did my first virtual uh, pr- a promo, I said, you know, in 29 years and 2,500 speaking engagements in 16 countries, I've never done a virtual program keynote in my office in my life. Um, and now that's all I was doing. So for the last year, that's all I started doing. I mean, I, I took a month and did all the necessary research and, you know, studied all of uh, all, the, all the manuals I could get a hold of, of yeah. how do you do the lighting? How do you do the microphones? How do you do the shooting? How do you do the cameras? How do you, because you had to go virtual. But the one thing that I thought was interesting about virtual was everybody goes, well, you're, you're not really talking to the audience. You're, you're, it's, it's not a live audience. But and if I talk to 10,000 people, 1,000 people, or 100 people, or 20, I always talk to one person at a time Mm. and and what I find interesting because I'd find somebody in the audience and I'd be looking Mm -hmm. at that person then look at another it's always one person at a time and when when I went to virtual what's really interesting is I'm technically only talking to one person at a time because you're you're looking right at that camera and they're and they're looking right at you and uh, and so you have to you have to get used to you know, talking to the red dot or the blue dot or whatever color <laughs> dot you're in for the camera, but you got to get used to it. And Just look at that dot. Use, <laughs> yeah, where's the dot? All right. And then you also got to use the fact that you're not going to get any, you're not going to get any feedback. That's the, I mean, I love right. live programs, but you can still be talking one-on-one to the person and, and get your message out to them. So, uh, so what happened is I started doing virtual programs like, you know, well, I mean, many of the speakers in my industry did, right. uh, some of them wouldn't. Yeah, they some of them, it. some of them went dark. Some of them yeah. just, and I still have a couple today that tell me, you know what, I want to wait till we go live. I, I am just waiting. And, but there, there is no waiting anymore. I, you know, yeah. going, going virtual really is the new way of how we're doing business across the board in, in many industries. Yeah. And, and, and now I, now I get, I mean, I get to, I get a contract that's two contracts. Now it's virtual <laughs> and live. It right. Be, they didn't know what to do. Everybody was like going, they were just panicking and waiting. 
and mm -hmm. then they started doing virtual programs and then and then now the contract comes both ways and so if you if this doesn't work because i just did a live program down in naples florida which was i mean <laughs> it was one year to the uh, one one year and four days okay uh, to, to from my last live one and it was i mean i was so excited because it was great to get the feedback of an audience again um right but as you said there are going to be some companies that are, are some organizations or associations that are going to only want to do virtual because of the yeah. fear of what's going on out there. Yeah, but the I'm fear is still it. the I'm, fear I'm, is still out there. Yeah, but, the fear is out there, but I'm seeing it changing. I'm seeing it now. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, people are starting to book, you know, live engagements and they're yes. starting to get an understanding that and as the as the the vaccine gets more and more and more and more and that herd effect they so call yes. out there is supposed yes. to get better, then I think uh, I think it's going to it's going to be better and then and plus you can still wear the mask in the audience uh they're, they're separated more i mean I, right. I feel sorry for the people that are managing the shows because instead of having a room yes. that's going to handle you know five thousand people you're going to have to have three rooms to handle that many people right. all spread and out they're, and they're and they're the ones right now that that are still on on the on the edge of do I do virtual? Do I do I do a live show? And then what happens? But like you said, some of them are planning for live. Some of them are doing hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. We've seen other organizers bring the speaker to the company, and they have a studio set up with, right within the company, and then they're streaming that out to their people. So there's so many different ways. Before it was, it's live, and we're right. going to there. What hotel do I go to? Now right. it's what technology piece are we using? And then also, depending on what technology they use, you may have audience participation, like you're talking about, or you may not. And right. it's, it really all depends on that technology that the company is using. Well, one thing that I like to do, and that I've learned in, in during the virtual is I go, I pre-record. Because uh, I mean, I just did one for the elevator industry, and um, they, they had 1200 people. Okay. And, and, and if something goes wrong, because we have your system we were working with, we have a Zoom system we're working with, and we right. have my system that we're working with. And right. so how do you eliminate complications? Right. So what I did is I pre-recorded because they really don't know it's pre-recorded because when you say, here's Rob and, and, the, and the screen goes open, it's, it's how do you know it's live or not live? I mean, it's right. So you, you do, right. You don't know. Like with us, you with know. our advertisers, yeah. they do a pre-recorded spot. Yep. And I'll say, you know, let's take a, a break. You don't, again, you don't really know no. that it's pre-recorded unless you're like, you're really into technology and you can see right. certain things, but yeah, you cool. really don't know, but you show up at the end though for Q and A. I show up at the end of the Q and A wearing exactly the same thing that I was wearing. So, okay. so, so, but the beauty about it is if you have an hour keynote and they have it on their system, it's already downloaded. Then mm -hmm. it nothing can go wrong unless it's their system, not mine. Right, it's their system. You know, it's, it's their like, system. Yeah. So, I'm out of it. <laughs> I, well, I, I did another one for now. I, I won't mention who it was, but I did another one, and we pre-recorded, and everything went seamless. And then we went into Q and A, and Q and A was a disaster. They, I mean, oh. all, their, their systems were not working. Things went, you know. And so after five minutes of things not working and not and the feed not working and the channel yes. not working. They said, Rob, we're just going to have to go and come back to this later on. And I said, fine. But the right. beauty about it is, is the, the one hour keynote, the meat that they wanted. Yeah, seamless. they got it. It was, it was perfect. They got it. So I love doing the pre-recorder to, to protect the meeting planner, to protect the, the company that I'm working for. They mm -hmm. have it in their hands. There it is. It's your game. And well, you, you just, brought up an important thing no there. Right. And you brought up an important thing there about protecting the event, the event planner, because that yeah. is one thing that is really critical for speakers to understand you're, you're working for them mm -hmm. and your job is to make them look good. And, and, and I even had, I was um, an MC for an event um, mid year last year, I think it was August and it was in Florida. We did it virtually and they kept over and over and over again, having technical issues mm -hmm. when they had to go to the breakout rooms. So as you know, the master of ceremonies, I just jumped in and I just started, you know, entertaining, you know, they were um, collegiate entrepreneur type program. And so I just, you know, jumped in and told stories. And of course, as speakers, we have plenty of stories we could share. So, <laughs> yeah, so you, do. right, that we do. We don't yeah. have a loss for, for, for talking. No. So, but that is really key. That is really critical that you are there to make them look good because guess what? You want them to hire you back again. Yes. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and when, you, when you're talking to a meeting planner and, and, and when I'm on a location with the company, um, I see myself as their employee. I'm there yes. for them. Mm, They're, I'm there full great. time. It's not like I'm going to go in my room and hide. Right. You know, it, it's, it's, I'm there to help, you know, mingle, to talk, to, to create. And I get some, sometimes some of my best material at the cocktail party the night before, yes. the dinner the night before and talking to the people mm-hmm. one-on-one. And um, because all my programs are customized anyway, because I've interviewed lots of their people yeah. uh, before I do a program, but I see myself as their employee. And so you're there Great. to help, uh, you know, help the situation. I remember, I remember one time I was in the back of the room, I was going on in the afternoon and um, I can't tell you exactly what happened, but the guy did something mm-hmm. absolutely terrible he wasn't supposed to do. And then the, the mm-hmm. crowd started laughing at him and he walked off stage, he left. Oh no. He, he, he left. And I'm in the very back of the room because I was just checking out the crowd for my afternoon program. And I right. saw the meeting planner and there was like, I think it was like 3000 people. They were like cringing. The planner, <laughs> he comes running down the center of the aisle and you can see 3000 people because it's on, you know, a, a big screen. Yeah. You see them all watching her run. And she runs up to me and she grabs me. She says, go on. Oh, I said, I said okay, excuse me? She says, I don't care what you talk about. She says, do your normal program this afternoon. She says, but I need you now. She says, yep. Go on, okay? And that is, the, that is the joy, either going early or yeah. be, being asked to go longer, which I've had happen to me. Oh, yes. Or yeah. got to cut you short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've had CEOs that have gotten up there and talked, they were supposed to talk 10 minutes and they talk 40 and you're sitting there going, they're talking into my time. And, and then you still have to end because the, the time you, you got to end on time. So you, right. you, you've got to adjust, but that's why you're, you're working for them. Yes. And the key is that to understand that, that my job is to, to make that program seamless for them. Yes. And so also we can get future engagements. That's, yes, that's what I'm looking for. Let's jump. Let's jump over to what it is that you do talk about at these, you know, right. at, for the companies. And one of the things that you you do talk about that I know is the characteristics of a successful company. So, what is the most important characteristics that you need to have to be successful, whether you're working for a company or for yourself as an entrepreneur? The number one characteristic, as far as I'm concerned, is discipline. Um, mm. I mean, you can read the books, people can tell you what to do, how to do it, the way to do it. They can give you all the information of what you need to do to be successful. But if you don't have the discipline to do it, then everything else is commentary. And yes. that's, that's one of the biggest problems I see with people out there that are not being successful. They're not putting in the necessary time. They're not putting in the practice, just like virtual. Virtual, you had to all of a sudden figure out, okay, what do I need to do? Mm-hmm. So you have to have the discipline to get up and stay, just get up earlier and stay later at night to, to cram in all this information so you can now understand how you need to be able to deliver your message. So when I look at organizations or salespeople or, or, or leaders or managers or whoever, or the employees that I'm talking to, I'm, I'm trying to say, because the way I look at a company, if, uh, who's a company? It's a person that I'm dealing with <clears throat> at that moment. Right. So if I make someone better in that audience, the company just got better. Yeah. So what, what, if I can teach them that the discipline is going to take them to the next level, if they'll do the necessary things, it's like salespeople. No one's born, born a salesperson. But if they'll do the things that we teach them, then they will become very successful. But mm-hmm. they have to be disciplined in doing it. And, and so most people, most people aren't. Mm. That's it. That's really interesting because also I was looking at some of your information and you talk about what makes a company great, but then also the number one reason why employees leave the company. So well, the number one yeah. is, is a boss. It's, it's mm. 46% of the people left a company last year because they did not feel appreciated. I mean, can you believe that? I mean, they, they, they I mean, attaboys, way to go. Thank you. It, I mean, and I've owned it's something, five companies. Right, something small, something minor, right? Yeah, something so minor, but I, I've owned five companies. And as an entrepreneur, you get so caught up in the day-to-day, I got to do this, I got to do that. I, I got to yeah. make all these things happen. And then you forget to go out and thank the people that work for you no, for showing up it. and doing their job. So I, st- I made it a point that I would, I would walk out on the plant floor and walk up to people and make sure other people saw me walk up to them. And say, I, I really appreciate what you're doing here. You're doing a great job. Because, you see, if it makes you feel good, it'll make them feel good. Yes. So one of the most important things I see in management is appreciate your people, but let them know. A compliment not given 
It's no compliment at all. You yeah. might be thinking, Bill's doing a great job. Yeah. But did you tell Bill? Okay. Mary, well, you'll love. Mary, yeah. Go you'll ahead. love. I worked for I, I, I worked for a company, um, a national organization, and I was a director. And right. just like you, that was my philosophy. Right. That was, you know, hand, hands down, that was my philosophy. And I remember, oh, I'll never forget it. We would, we, it was a late night. We, I had my team of seven researchers putting together all of this information because our president our, um, was, was doing this across country travel over the next couple of days. So we had to, you know, put some late hours in to get things done. So I ran out, got a couple of trays of pizza and came back to work with my team. Yep. I got reprimanded for that. I was, I did. I got called to the office. I got called to the principal's office and I was told, you don't do that as a leader. You don't do that. That's, that's not what leaders do because that makes you look weak. And I said, well, I disagree. And so I was pretty much out of that job shortly after. I mean, I mean, I always get ready to say it's time to start looking for another company. (laughs) I mean, if that is, well, because when you talk about what makes a company great, it's culture. And what makes it what makes a culture is the leader, and 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 what makes the leader is trust. Mm-hmm. But when people right. when you start appreciating people and you start creating the culture, because as I said, what is a company? It's the person that I'm dealing with at that moment. It's not your brand. It's not the name of the company. It's not IBM or Exxon or, or Zero. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the person. Yeah, it's the people that are the there. Phone. That's the. Why do you think? Why do you think that's still happening? I mean, even even today, why why do you think that still happens in an organization? Because they're making they're putting people in leadership positions that are not leaders, mm. and and that's one of the biggest problems. I mean, um, what I, I give an example of one of my companies. Um, if I had a manager that came up to me and said, "This guy's this guy's awful. I hate him. Fire him." I would sit there and say, okay, so you, you're, you're done with them. You're finished with them. You, you, you don't want to work with this person anymore. And they would right. go, yes, they're, they're, they're awful. And I'd go, okay, then they're mine. And they would go, what do you mean they're yours? I said, well, I'm, I'm going to take them away from you and I'm going to put them somewhere else. Because I learned a long time ago, sometimes it's not the employee, it's the manager. Right. All right. So we had put them through a, 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 a pretty extensive vetting program to put them in this position. So my statement is, when we hired them, they were good, and they got bad on your watch, hmm, maybe we should go put them with somebody else. So I would go put them with another manager. And my rule was this. I told the manager who no longer wanted the person, you can't say a thing. You don't tell anybody that you hate that person, you don't like that person, Mm. you don't want to fire that person. I don't want anything to to taint the other manager's thought, oh, I'm getting a lousy employee. Mm. I would just move somebody over to another department. And then, and, and I would do that three or four times. And, and if they didn't work out in three or four of those departments, then I would finally fire them. Because then, I, right, I then, you, a, right, then you know, right. There's then a, I, then I know it's not the manager. I know it's mm-hmm. the employee. Right. But so many times <clears throat> you'll get a good manager that I'll take that person and make them feel special and boom, they'll run through walls for you. Yeah. But you get other people that are so wrapped up in the numbers. I got to hit the numbers. I got to hit the quotas. I got to make mm-hmm. the, they forget to, they forget to tell their people, thank you. Yeah, just and, right. And just give them the attaboy and thank you. You've, give you've them, done, give, give the attaboy will take it. I mean, you want to raise your, I always say, you want to pump up your profits, pump up your people. Mm, I yeah. love, that. I say, love oh, that. I'm not, I'm not there to be a cheerleader. I'm there to be a manager. My statement to you is bye. Yeah. See you later. Go yeah. work for somebody else. And you and I definitely have the same philosophy and we yeah. could talk about that so, so, so much. We need to take a break. We got a lot of our sponsors in here so okay. we could thank them. So let's just take a really quick break and we'll be right back. The Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. You can find the Connie Five Show on most of your favorite networks. It's time to now recognize and thank our major networks for all of their support. In the house, we have Conscious Business Radio, C-Suite Radio, Transformation Radio, iHeart Radio. We are also heard on Google Play, Apple Radio, Stitcher, and so many more that I just can't keep up with them all. I'm Connie Pipe, your unstoppable diva. We'll learn more about our gym and how we can work together at my fancy swanky website, ConnieFifeShow.com. I'll see you over there. Until then, like, 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 share, share, share. Now back to the show. 
right. We are back and we are here with Rob Stevenson, an international speaker. And if you want to know more about Rob Stevenson, head on over to talentconcierge.co. There's a lot of information there about him. And you could also check him out on YouTube. So you could see some of his speaking speaking skills. And he is also a certified virtual presenter. And that Ooh. is really important to know. Yes. It is. It is. <laughs> Important, important to know. So we are now, Rob, putting you in the hot seat. Okay. All right. So this is just a quick yes or no response. So are I, you ready? Go. I'll give you All right. All right. What's been your release during quarantine? Working out. What's your favorite go-to business book? Oh, how to win. Well, my favorite book is uh, my life is how to win friends and influence people. I've probably read it seven times. I mean, there's so many other great books that are out there, Covey's mm -hmm. books and everything else. But I mean, my go-to book that I've, I've, I've lived with for my entire career is that one. And that one sits on my desk as well. Yep. It came to me from my father-in-law. It's one of the yes, first uh, editions. Been, I think it was published in 1929. The first a, yep. I have, it's a paperback copy that yep, I have. Mine too. <laughs> it's autographed, but I can't read the autograph. I don't know who signed yep. it. <laughs> What's your favorite dance move? Oh, yeah. Oh God, uh, I haven't been on a dance floor in probably 20 years. I, I mean, in, in, when I was growing up, it was called the hustle. There you go. And you're I still mean, hustling. I, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, I, I, I could go out there and do that, but I mean, you tell those people are going to go, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> right. Right. The what? Yeah. But it's coming back. Everything I, comes right. Every, everything, everything, everything comes, comes back. back. Right. Yeah. Right. So what's the greatest advice that you have received and that you still live by today? Persistence. The greatest mm. advice I had was from from the, the, my first manager, who was a fan, who was a Vietnam vet. He should have died, you know, in Vietnam. He was blown mm -hmm. up badly, and he uh, had a glass eye, and had so many reasons why to be mm. terrible and hate the world. And he was just the opposite. And he and he and and he taught me in sales. He said it's persistence. Um, I mean, Love it. Uh, the eighty percent of the sales uh, are occur in the fifth to twelfth call. They but do, the majority, but, but the majority of the salespeople quit on the first or second call. That's right. They yeah, do. So you see any, he, he also, I mean, I, I, I'm cheating because you said one, uh, he, he said, take nothing personal. It's important information. Yeah. He says, take nothing personal. He says, when, you know, every no takes you closer to a yes, mm -hmm. but just, you know, learn from why they said no, and then go on to the next one. You know, so to me, as far as I'm concerned, my career has been pers persistence. Um, I mean, mm. even when I got into the speaking business, you have to have a video to get, a, get engagement. You have to have an right. engagement to get a video. Right. It's a tough industry to get into. But yeah. um, uh, I mean, when you look at it from that perspective, even though I had owned five companies and sold internationally, when I got into the speaking business, I was a rookie again. Right. So you've yeah. got to you got you got to earn your stripes and you got to prove mm -hmm. to them that you can keep an audience for an hour. So to me, the number one thing is. If you're going, if you're going to succeed, yeah. As I said, the first word was discipline, but then you have to have the persistence to to to, to fight ahead, to forge on. Right, you do, you do. Well, I know when I left corporate, I was a CEO, right. and and when I decided I was going to have my own company, yeah, I put everything together and got my phone. That's at that point sat on my desk, right? <laughs> and I waited for the phone to ring, and it never rang, and oh. and you know kick my ego it was like well why isn't anybody ringing everybody oh, yeah. knows me right. <laughs> right no it doesn't work that way no, i mean you, you, it's it is persistence it's it's a hustle i got the nickname unstoppable years and years and years ago um for that and again it's reinvention it's being unstoppable it's being persistent it's it's everything everything i picked up on something you said though about sales you said don't talk about anything personal what do you mean by that well, when you, it's, it's about them. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, because I remember when my, my, my first boss, uh, I go back to him, Jay, uh, who was unbelievable. He taught me, he says, you know, you got to get the gatekeeper down. Everybody's been sold and they don't like to be sold. So mm -hmm. you gotta learn how to help them get something, but you got to get the gatekeeper down. Yeah. He says, so when you walk into an office, you need to learn how to read the walls. And I was right. like, what? That's you, right. to, you got to figure out, look, look at the wall, look at a picture, look at yes. the desk, look, look at something to see if you can find something in common that's important to them. 
it's not about you. It's about mm -hmm. them. Them. Right. And I, I'll never forget this. So my first sales call in Conyers, Georgia, he taught me read the walls technique. And he went with me. And we walk into this office. And I, and I, I mean, I'm like, going, oh, this is fantastic. There were three fish mounted on the wall. I was going to say, was there a fish story? <laughs> oh, this is my fish story. Yeah. So, so I'm sitting there going, oh, this is great. This guy's a fisherman. I'm going to be able to read the walls and develop rapport and talk about him and talk about his fish and everything else. And so, so my first words out of my mouth in my sales career of my life, my first call, I say, well, I, I, I see you're a fisherman. He said, nah, I got those on the wall for stupid salespeople that have been taught to read the walls. <laughs> It developed rapport. And I'm like going, oh my God. I look over at my manager. I'm going, what do I do now? I mean, he just just blew me right out of the park. You know? So yeah. And then that also when I, when we went back and talked about it, you you have to be prepared. You've got to be able to I understand it. But what I learned in a sales call is the more 80% of the time they should be speaking, not you. And so ask great questions about them, about yes. their situation, about what's going on. So when I talk about make it, don't make it personal, it's not about me. It's, you know, it's not how wonderful I am and how great I am. It's, it's what I can do for you. But more right. importantly, what is your situation? Mm -hmm. And when you get them talking and when you get them open up and they, and they have that trust, confidence, and rapport with you, yes. you win. So great questions and, and listening. And I also used to write things down. Um, and, and clients would sit there and they were going, was that important? I said, well, I'm not sure right now, but you know, I'll, I'll get back to this. But it was, but they saw the fact that, wow, he's listening, but he also wrote it down. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Where some salespeople walk in there and they just act like they're going to retain everything. Right. Right. And I'm like right. going now, nah. but it makes them think, oh, I just said something that he wrote down. Why did he write it does. It down? Yeah, and yeah, so, it makes them think like, hmm, what is yeah, he what's going about on? Me? Yeah, yeah. I, you care enough to listen and you care enough to write it down so you right. can get back to that. And I, I've made statements. I'm, I'm not sure if it's important yet, but it could be later on. So yeah. you just keep talking. You let me know what your situation is. So mm -hmm. I learned a long time ago, quit, quit talking. Yep. And be careful what you read on that wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Get ready. It could be yeah. a bad one. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we must have went to the, that same school because that was a lot of what, what I learned as well. And the other one too, you know, when you, when you pre-close, 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 close, pre -close, close right. let them talk. Let them talk. Next person, the person that talks, who talks loses. loses. <laughs> we know that rule. That's right. We know that rule. I yeah. guess we're, I guess we're from old school, um, yeah. old school sales because we know that that's changed and that'd be a whole nother conversation. So Rob, we're about ready to wrap up here. Um, so what next projects do you have? I know you have a book out. Um, what other projects do you, do you have coming up that you want to share with us? Well, I've been, I've been doing a lot on LinkedIn. I mean, anybody can follow me uh, on LinkedIn and I, I put something out uh, five days a week. And what I like about LinkedIn is you get graded. I mean, you, you, when they, they either get likes or no likes, or you get comments or no comments. And so I can kind of pay attention to what's going on and get a feel for what's mm. happening out there, in, out there in the marketplace, yeah. not just my industry, but the, in, totally in the marketplace because it's so diverse on LinkedIn. And I've got about 30,000 followers. And so, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking that, those posts that I, and I spend a lot of time on them. I spend between an hour and an hour and a half a day. Mm, putting, okay. putting those together. I don't just, just throw out a quote. I just don't believe in that. I need to think. Yeah, I don't like and, doing and that. And you have 1,400 characters, excuse me, 1,300 characters that you can put also with your post. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have a slide that they can see that they can use. And then I give them a little bit more in depth. And what I want to do now is I want to take, I, I mean, last year I did, you know, I did over 220 uh, posts. And I know which ones were accepted well and which ones weren't. So I'm right. starting to put that together in, in a book form. Because <laughs> what I like about LinkedIn is it's got to be quick. Yeah. And people, you know, cut to the chase and get through the minutia. You know, people don't want to you know, go through all the, you know, 400 pages of a book. They want the bullet points. I mean, mm -hmm. my last book, Raise Your Line, I have a hundred different habits or things or, or, or rules, but they're in a box. You know, so you could actually flip through the book and just read the rule if you wanted to. Because some people are kind of like, I, I don't need all the support information. No, they just, just want bite size. They just exactly. want those. Just, those just tell me what I need to do. If you tell yes. me what I need to do, I can be successful. Right. And that's what I, that's, so that's what I tried to do on the LinkedIn side of it. Do this. Okay. 
this will make you successful. Do this. Yes. And, and, and you don't have to listen to all the minutiae on it. And, yes. they, and, and they want to say, well, who says that? Well, if, uh, you, I've been doing this for 30 years and I've learned from, you know, I've, I've interviewed over 10,000 employees, managers, and senior right. executives in 250 different industries. So this is not me telling you, you need to do yeah. this. And they can look at your bio, right, to get, right. to get more of that information. And that's something that people forget that, you know, because when they put a post out there, they just want to like, everything like you know regurgitate right. everything no don't no. do that again it's it's those bite-sized nuggets i always say to people tell me what you do in seven words or less yeah yes because it's those nuggets that people want to hear and then if it's really interesting then they'll say tell me more those are the secret words tell me more tell me more right, right. And that's what you want to hear. That, those, are the, those are the words that you want to hear. Right. So um, all fabulous. Uh, great, great, great information. Everybody, Rob Stevenson. Rob, I want to thank you for being here. My uh, pleasure. Always, always fabulous. And for everyone out there, uh, please check them out. Rob Stevenson. You can book them to speak at your next conference, sales meeting, business training, uh, board of directors meeting. He's the guy that you want to bring in for that. And you can do all of that over at talentconcierge.co. Our fabulous team is there to help you and, um, you know, check him out and, you know, find out what his availability is. And again, he is a certified virtual presenter. So no worries, no concerns. He's got you covered. So nothing, nothing, nothing to worry there. So this is, I'm Connie Fife. This is the Connie Fife show. Thanks for being here and we'll see you next time. And until then be unstoppable together. Hey y'all, it's Connie Fife. Thank you for listening to the Connie Fife Show. Check back often. You don't want to miss any of the good stuff. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest on the show, head over to the ConnieFifeShow.com to apply. While you're there, check out our amazing advertising opportunities that will put you right in front of your perfect client. I will see you over there. Do yourself a favor this week, activate your power, and be unstoppable together.